Hello. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our session today, uh, using biography and portraiture to learn about Asian Pacific American history. Um, please, uh, while we're getting started, feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat. We're so happy to have you here today. Uh, my name is Philippa Rappaport. I'm the lead for education and engagement at the Smithsonian Office of Educational Technology, which is a central education office at the Smithsonian. And we're the office behind the Smithsonian Learning Lab. And I'm so pleased to be joined today by Andrea Kim Neighbors, who is the head of education at the Smithsonian Asian Pacific American Center. In our session today, we'll explore how biographies and portraits can be used to learn about Asian Pacific American history, art, culture, lived experiences, and more. We'll practice techniques to analyze a portrait of tennis star and activist Naomi Osaka from the center's new book, We Are Here, 30 Inspiring Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders Who Have Shaped the U.S. We'll also focus on close looking and reflection on how Osaka spoke up about social justice, the Black Lives Matter movement, and her experiences as a mixed race woman of Japanese and Haitian descent. And we'll also share with you adaptable strategies to study biography and portraiture and 30 classroom ready digital activities that can be used with middle and high school students. Um, just on a personal note, I also love the book and I gave it to my nieces and nephews over the holidays and it's really pretty wonderful. So um, just a few logistics to share. So here is a slide I forgot to show you. Um, please do feel free to introduce yourself. I see some of you are doing that in the chat, fantastic. Um, so the Learning Lab, this is a picture of the homepage of the lab. If you don't know it yet, the lab is a place where you can discover anything that's digitized from across the Smithsonian. You can create interactive learning experiences with your discoveries, and then you can share these, these findings and, and um, your activities with others. As we, uh, we have a lot of content in the lab to complement today's session, and I'll be putting those links in the chat as we get to them. We also, um, our series today is called Cultivating Learning, and it's a series that we do about one program a month, and it features educators modeling techniques to use digital museum resources uh, in the classroom and to support student learning in a diverse range of learning environments. So the next session coming up will be on Tuesday, February 21st, and we'll have educators from the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center talking about citizen science and data literacy. And then I also wanna just draw your attention to our Help Center, which if you go to here, I'll put this link in the chat, on our help page, we have all kinds of content there to help you learn to use the lab and to learn to use digital museum content in the classroom. So we have a step-by-step -step guide, we have training videos, and we also have these archived sessions. So that's, if you joined us today from the lab, this is where you can find the live session and also the archived. And this is what it looks like on the help page. Uh, we hope that you will interact with us today. So please do share your ideas and questions. If you're joining us through YouTube, you can do that through the chat function on the far right. And if you're joining us through Facebook, you would use the comment section in the bottom center of your screen. Okay, so we'd like to start off today with a question. How do you advocate for change? So please feel free to post your thoughts in the chat and I will turn it over to Andrea. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Andrea Kim Neighbors. I use she, her pronouns. And Philippa, thank you so much for the introduction and for this great opportunity to be here with you and everyone who's tuned in. Um, I'm looking at everyone's comments. I see we have friends calling in from New Jersey, from New York City, 
hello to my friend Ashley. Um, a, the project I'm maybe diving in today is actually something that Ashley and I worked on together. Um, I love we have a teen librarian here as well. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm really happy to be here with all of you. Um, and thank you for taking some time to consider this question of how do you advocate for change? Um, I can't wait to see um, your thoughts to this question. Um, I encourage everyone to approach it uh, the best way, the most truthful way to, to, to you uh, and what change looks like for you and what advocacy looks like for you as well. It looks like many different things. It can be many different things. Um, as I'm seeing some answers coming in, I'm seeing Sarah, thank you. Staying truthful to what you're defending, take action in supporting groups of people that are being treated unfair, et cetera. It's beautiful, thank you. Um, to Tracy, planning AAP activities school-wide in May. That's great. Um, I will be, we'll, we will be putting some links in the chat that will hopefully help in shaping those activities in May. That's wonderful. Um, speaking up and speaking out, using signage on the door and uh, lapel buttons. I like that. Um, that shows, you know, this really wonderful kind of consistency in language and, you know, uh, messages you want to put out. Uh, on this particular comment, we're actually going to talk about a way in which Naomi Osaka uh, wore something to send out a message um, and to speak her mind with barely speaking out, um, but just kind of putting a message on, uh, on herself in front of a global audience. Um, again, thank you all for having me today. I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction um, as we dive into the content of our talk today. Um, please drop in, in questions, comments into the chat. I will be looking uh, while I'm sharing with you all, and um, I hope to address as much uh, as I can. Um, so today, we're, as the title suggests, we're going to be looking at one particular biography and one particular portrait um, that can be used to learn about a particular Asian American story. Um, and um, I'm very excited to be doing that with you. We're going to be looking at this portrait a lot, but we're also going to be learning more. We're going to be learning more context that will hopefully drive our continuing conversation about this portrait and then directing you um, to uh, additional resources that you can, um, you can use hopefully in the classroom, in the library, in any learning environment that you lead. Um, but before we begin, I would, before we continue, like to extend a message of care. This is a rather kind of bitter and sweet message of care, given the tragedy just yesterday, this weekend in Monterey Park, California. Over the weekend when Asian American communities were celebrating the Lunar New Year, um, I'm very saddened by this tragedy and I wanna extend my deepest condolences to Monterey Park's community and to communities across the US who are processing this horrifying news during a time of joy and celebration and togetherness. Um, I hope that you all in this time prioritize the care that you need during um, our conversations today. I also want to extend um, hopefully a happier Lunar New Year um, greeting to everyone here, to you and your communities. Um, and I'm very grateful to be spending the early parts of this uh, Lunar New Year, the year of the rabbit with you all. So just wanna um, say that before we continue. Um, some information about the Asian Pacific American Center before we begin. Uh, we are now 23 years old. As a unit at the Smithsonian, we're quite small. Uh, we have colleagues who are stationed in Los Angeles, California, uh, in Hawaii, and throughout the DC area here. Our mission is to amplify and uplift the stories of Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders across the US, the Pacific, and the world. We collaborate with artists, scholars, community leaders, educators, students to bring immersive experiences, storytelling, and art making opportunities. And, and more to highlight where our communities have been and where we are going. Uh, so thank you again to Philippa Rappaport and Tef Porter and the Smithsonian Office of Education Technology team for this great opportunity to be here with you all today. Um, so let me transition here. This is uh, uh, the, the book that Philippa mentioned. Um, we are here, 30 inspiring Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders who have shaped the United States. I'm very proud of this project. It came out last October. Um, and it's written by Naomi Hirahara and illustrated by Ili Ferranda. We'll soon get to spend some great time with Ili's beautiful work with her, her illustrations. Um, this book is our first middle grade anthology. 
uh, and it centers the stories of activists, entrepreneurs, journalists, entertainers, musicians, educators. You might notice some famous faces here like Keanu Reeves. Uh, we also have Grace Lee Boggs. Um, but we also have folks that you may not know about, such as, such as Chanifa Kamboksa, who is the leader of uh, Legacies of War. Um, we have Qian Sheng Wu, who is a very famous, important uh, physicist um, in science history. Uh, Shirin Nishat is uh, an amazing uh, Iranian uh, photographer and artist. Uh, Teresa Taiva is a Kiribati uh, African-American uh, scholar um, who wrote uh, many books and articles about uh, legacies of U.S. presence and imperialism in the Pacific. So we wanted to create this book to introduce young readers and their families to stories that you may know about, um, but you'll learn a bit more about some of these well-known folks. But then you're also going to meet folks that um, maybe you didn't expect to learn about. Um, and so we wanted to show this balance and we wanted to show uh, and introduce readers to a number of stories of folks who have advocated for change in a many, many different ways, but also wanted to highlight stories that showcase everyone's global interconnections um, in this book. Many of the folks in this book are mixed race. Many are um, uh, folks who grew up in many different parts of the world. These aren't stories that are tied to the borders of the United States. These are stories that are um, really kind of take over uh, the world. Um, and they're very powerful, and we're going to dive into one in just a moment. Um, and that story is Naomi Osaka. So if you go to the next slide, please. And the link to the book is right there, and um, we, uh, I'll, I'll make sure we have a uh, that's, that's shared um, in the chat as well. So um, today we're going to be talking about one person in this book, Naomi Osaka. Um, but before we dive in to Naomi's story, and the details of this portrait in the chat, if you could, I'd love if you could share something that you already know about Naomi Osaka. And if you're not that familiar with Naomi Osaka, that's okay. Um, even if you've heard her name or maybe she looks familiar, um, go ahead and enter some questions maybe that you have of her if, if you don't know much about her already. I'll give everyone a moment to do that. And while you're sharing what you already know about Naomi Osaka, I'm gonna enjoy reading everyone's uh, answers about advocating for change. Thank you, Sarah. So Naomi Osaka, Naomi Osaka is a Japanese tennis player. She takes her health very seriously. Yes. And spoke up about boundaries, about respecting her mental health. Young tennis player, advocated for mental health awareness in the athletic world. Yes. Has great style on the court. That, so true. <laughs> and she's going to be a mother soon. Uh, she announced very recently that she's expecting uh, a child, which is uh, very exciting. Um, thank you. This is great. So we already know some things about Naomi Osaka. Um, on the next slide, we're going to take another look at this portrait. Um, keeping everything that we already know about her in mind, um, we're going to look at this portrait, we're going to look at different elements of the portrait, and we're going to engage in some questions about what we what we're thinking about Naomi Osaka as an individual when we look at this portrait. So um, what we're going to do first is we're going to break down and review the elements of a portrait. Um, these elements are going to help guide our conversation, hopefully, uh, guiding our conversation, but also our observations and even assumptions we may have about the portrait. Um, I want to give a shout out to our colleagues at the National Portrait Gallery and the American Women's History Initiative, Ashley Corin, who I know is in the audience right now, um, for writing a really great guide about how to analyze a portrait, and how to read it by breaking, breaking it down into these really core elements and these key steps. So they state in their analysis guide that portraiture presents an exciting challenge that allows for a distinctive form of personal engagement with art. For some, portraiture is a mirror into their own lives, and for others, it is a lens to expand or embrace the world that they live in. So we're going to go down these elements one by one. So the first element is facial expression, or the look or, or perceived movement of muscles on someone's face. Facial expressions can help identify the sitter's emotions. 
So as we look at Naomi Osaka's face, let's take into consideration the expression that she is sharing. The second element is clothing. Clothing are the items a sitter wears on their body. Clothing may tell us more about one's occupation, personality, status, etc. So as we move our eyes around the portrait again, we can take in what is she wearing and what is that telling us? Third is hairstyle. The way a person wears their hair, including the color and style. And then next is color. The various hues that set the tone, the mood, or overall feeling of the sitter. They have very vibrant colors in this particular portrait. And the next is medium or the material used to create a piece of art. And then finally is the artistic style, personal techniques and medium or media that an artist uses to create a portrait. So in considering all these different elements of a portrait and looking this one over as we're looking and breaking down those elements, let's apply them to how we'd like to engage with this first question as a group, which is what is the first thing that you notice when we look at this portrait? And if you could share in the chat, that would be great. What is the first thing that you notice? Oh, and Philip, if you click one more time, the question will show up on the slide. Thank you. Smiling facial expression and blue color. I love that the blue pops out. The eyes, bright background, her hair, her eyes. Notice her eyes are coming up quite a bit. What is it about her eyes that is the first thing you notice? Oh, Ashley, thank you. Hi, Ashley. Uh, Ashley Naranjo. Uh, it's a confident gaze directly towards the viewer. She's just looking right at you. Um, that can also tell us some more about, uh, you know, other parts of the expression outside of the eyes, perhaps the the stance, maybe the, the, um, the posture. Oh, Gabrielle, thank you. Her eyes have a long gaze to them. Yes. Demi, thank you. It catches your attention like she's staring right at you. I seem like a good, confident gaze. It's, yeah, she's looking right at you. She's looking, she, she's looking right through me. <laughs> um, looking at some other observations, the image fills the space. Strong shoulders, yes. When you play like Naomi Osaka plays, strong shoulders, a good stare, <laughs> you know. She's a tough, serious competitor. Yes. I like this confident smile. That's great. That's another great observation. And prominent shoulders. These are great observations. Keep them coming. Um, what do you think the colors tell us? I see bold colors have been mentioned quite a bit. Um, the color blue in particular stood out. Um, are there, do we have any thoughts or observations about the color choices perhaps? and what they might mean. It's entirely possible there's no meaning. It could just be, it's the artistic choice of the illustrator, um, maybe to make it pop a bit more. And whenever I look at this portrait, the pink in the background is always the thing that stands out to me at first. It's a very bright, vivid color. The colors, ooh, I like this, both dynamic and calm. A uh, passionate person in control. I love that. Representative of her her heritage, possibly. It's entirely possible. The color is cheerful, but also the colors have been thought about uh, in coordination with the hat. Absolutely. The, the hat and then the top that she's wearing. Uh, the colors convey confidence. Yes, they're very strong, bold colors. I love this. Um, someone shared, they think the blue tennis outfit can represent inspiration, freedom, and intuition. Oh. I love that. Yes, red and green are complementary, gives energy to the piece. I love this, this is great. This is great, it's making me think about this uh, portrait in, in some new ways. Um, there's a second question to this slide, um, which is, 
What adjectives would you use to describe Osako's facial expression? Some of you have already touched on this. We're gonna dive into her expression a bit more. Earlier we said uh, confident. Are there other adjectives you would use to describe her facial expression? John, great question. Uh, we will, at, at the end, I will um, share some information about how you can access the guide uh, and the analysis here. Oh, I love that. Okay, proud, determined, assured, confident, self-assured and calm, humble. This is great. Meaningful, very meaningful face, facial expression. Calm. This is fantastic. Um, Using uplifted chin suggests a confidence and a determination. Yes. Let's go to the next slide. Um, what I'm going to do now is share some context, um, some information about uh, Naomi Osaka uh, that may inform some of our observations uh, and assumptions about this portrait. So as you've pointed out already, as we know here in this group, Naomi, Naomi Osaka is a tennis star. Um, in this image here, you see an image uh, in headline from a news story about the, the U.S. Open in 2020. So think about 2020, where were, where were we in 2020? We're in the midst of COVID-19. Um, and in the summer, we're also in the midst of a global uprising in support of Black Lives. So during this competition, Naomi wore different masks with the names of victims of racist violence. Without having to say a word, she found a way to generate a conversation since she was televised for the world to see. Um, I would love to know if in the chat, if, you, if, if anyone watched this happening on, on the television, I would love to, to know if this is an event that folks here are familiar with. Um, Naomi Osaka, I think some folks mentioned this before and what we know about her. Um, she is someone who has spoken up uh, and prioritized her health. So Naomi has been known to be a very soft-spoken uh, person, but someone who has found creative ways to communicate to the world what matters to her. So we're, gonna, we're kind of going back in time into Naomi's biography in the hopes that this kind of further contextualizes this slide here in the next one. So going back into her history, she was born in Osaka, Japan, to a Japanese mother and a Haitian father. Naomi and her sister Mari were given their mother's maiden name as their last name. And so when Naomi and Mari were young girls, they watched two famous tennis star sisters on television, Serena and Venus Williams. Seeing the Williams sisters on TV, Naomi's father introduced them to tennis and moved the family to the United States to train, to become familiar with the sport, to train to do the sport and compete in it, also to be closer to family. Um, at the young age of 18, Naomi, I mean, not 18, 14, I'm sorry, Naomi Osaka, Naomi Osaka became a pro player under the Women's Tennis Association. She was ranked 430th in the world, and just three years later, she was ranked 40th. In 2018, she faced Serena Williams for the U.S. Open Championship and won. I remember watching that on television. It was very, uh, it was a very emotional match. Uh, she was the first Japanese player to win a Grand Slam tournament. As a biracial woman, Naomi has faced difficult experiences in her life. One of her Japanese sponsors produced a television commercial in an anime cartoon style, depicting Naomi with very pale, light skin. Uh, the ad was highly criticized around the world and it was eventually pulled off of television. Um, Naomi herself identifies as a Japanese Haitian American woman and has always defied labels uh, placed under her. Um, go to the next slide, please. So here what you're looking at are the, those masks that she wore uh, at the US Open in 2020. Um, the face masks, we're, we're all familiar with face masks. Um, it has become essential and protecting ourselves and others from COVID-19, but can also be a creative way to send a message. So Naomi Osaka used these seven masks that you see here uh, to name Trayvon Martin, Philando Castile, Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, Tamir Rice, Elijah McClain, and Breonna Taylor. 
when you think about a blank slate, such as a face mask, going back to how we want to advocate for change in the world, what kind of message of action, hope, awareness, or kindness would you put onto a face mask? So if we go back into our chat, a very active chat, I would love to know what messages would you put onto a mask? I'm looking back at the chat. Dia, I, I, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. I'm looking at Dia's lessons. I am very excited that you were there to see that match. I bet that was amazing to see in live time. What message of action, hope, kindness would you put onto a face mask? Stories matter. Thank you, Brandy. I too am an American. Thank you, Helena Murray. AAPI, a message of solidarity. Mm -hmm. There are so many things we can say. Um, and the thing about all are welcome. The thing that's so interesting about doing on a mask is that we have to wear it and no matter what, when you are out, people will be confronted with it. People will read it, they will see it. They will read the message, take it in. And then, um, Oh, Pauletta, I like that. You can't tell, but I'm smiling at you. Smile. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an activity uh, where you can, with your students, print out a paper version of a face mask and write a message. Um, and the activity also comes with um, an activity of writing a letter to your future self of what, how you hope that uh, acts of kindness and awareness have um, played out in the future, what sort of outcomes you would have hoped to see. I'll show you where everything is. Okay, we're gonna go back to Naomi Osaka's portrait. If we go to the next slide, please. Thank you, Philippa, for all your amazing help. So now that we have some additional information about the US Open, about Naomi Osaka's life, her childhood, um, her racial identity, um, if you could ask the sitter here, Naomi Osaka, or even the illustrator about this portrait, what would you ask? Maybe if we're sitting across from Naomi Osaka directly in this exact same pose, looking at her facial expression, what would you what would you ask? I would ask, what are you thinking about right now? With her facial expression in this portrait, it's it's a bit you know, a, a big mystery. What's on your mind? What are you thinking about? Hopefully a good thought. Hopefully a thought where change she has advocated for has been seen. I'm sure there are many questions you would want to ask her. Um, as I look at this portrait, I'm with Sarah. I would be very curious to know what is she thinking, but also um, was this portrait taken after winning? Paulina, that's a really good question. Um, it could have been, you know, maybe, maybe it's a facial expression of just total confidence, pleasantness, feeling very confident. A lot of folks picked up that this is a portrait that exudes confidence. Perhaps she had just won. Um, what changes will you make today? Yes. Do you like this image of yourself? I, I like that question. I don't think that's a question we ask each other <laughs> enough if we like it. It's a moment in time, right? And so when you look at this moment in time, it probably, she might have a different relationship with it after some years. What is in your mind when you illustrate her? Yes. What message might you share with young female athletes? I love that. That's wonderful. I have a second question for you and my final question for everyone here, which is after learning more about Naomi Osaka and how she advocated for change, do you have new observations, new questions, new insights, curiosities about the portrait?
if you can change one thing, what will it be? Yes. You know, and I, um, I, I, I'm with a lot of folks here. Um, the new questions I have are what, what's on your mind? Uh, what's making you smile that way? Look at me that way. Um, standing very confidently with these prominent shoulders. Um, what just happened that would make you want to, you know, have your stance in this sort of powerful way? Oh, I love this. What is your favorite part of this portrait? Yes. Um, Tess, I really like this question. Should it have included a message for change? Yeah. Something to indica indicate the passion? Absolutely. Curious if she feels the illustrated portrait captures her essence. If only I would love to know what artists think about how you even capture one's essence. Um, yeah, what are some other examples of athletes using fashion like Naomi Osaka? You know, luckily at the Smithsonian, we have some of those uh, clothing choices by many incredible um, athletes, activists, uh, Muhammad Ali, um, many other tennis stars whose names are escaping me right now, unfortunately. Um, if you're in the DC area and come to the American History Museum, the Entertainment Nation um, uh, exhibition has some of these um, clothing choices. Um, on full view. Gabrielle says, I see her gaze as being quietly determined now for so many more reasons. Yes. You know, after this conversation, seeing everyone's observations, when I look at this portrait now, I wonder, I, I think what I like to imagine is this is something that happened after the US Open, after people read what she had written, the name she had written on her masks. And perhaps she's pleased that the world has known this about her, um, that this is important to her, and she's taking action by speaking out in a very subtle, quiet way. Um, I like to think that maybe her gaze is showing a confidence in knowing that the world can respect her as someone who is an advocate for change, in addition to being an athlete, in addition to being a mental health advocate. Um, these are all great questions and great observations. Uh, I really thank you all for joining in this portrait analysis with me. Um, the guide is available. I'll, I'll show in a minute where we can um, send you copies of this. But there are so many more questions that you can ask yourselves of this portrait in breaking down the elements and looking at different details here. Um, and I know seeing a portrait in person is always different on the screen. Um, and because I'm looking at a printed version right here, I can tell you if you receive, if you wish to receive a printed copy, um, it looks very, um, there's so much more detail uh, to take in. Um, if we go to the next slide, I'll show you where you can learn more about Naomi Osaka's story, because there's so much more than what I have shared with you. I've just skimmed the surface, really. Um, but with other folks, if you're interested in learning more about great Asian American and Pacific Islander leaders, community leaders, global leaders. Um, this, uh, what you see, what you're looking at right now is a screenshot of 30 learning lab collections we have on a number of individuals. Um, and if you wanna dive into Naomi Osaka's story more, uh, there's one learning lab just about her. Um, you can have access to the face mask. You can take a closer look at them. Um, those face masks are um, at the Smithsonian. They're at the Cooper Hewitt Museum of Design. Um, and uh, it's, it's really great that the Smithsonian has um, honored this history and Naomi's actions, and it's now part of the institution. Um, so if you, uh, Philip, if you don't mind clicking one more time, uh, you'll see kind of a, a bigger version of uh, what these individual learning labs look like. So here on the right, you can see um, the different tiles that breaks down uh, Naomi's story. You learn more about her childhood, You'll have access to great videos uh, about her and her personal life and her story, her upbringing. Um, there are thinking routines involved here. Uh, again, you can have those close up um, looks at the individual masks. And um, there are some additional inquiry questions you could use with students, you could use with peers and um, you know, folks in a group setting to talk more about her story. Um, the, uh, all of the learning labs in this collection based on the book, um, do include very similar resources. Um, some are longer than others. There are some folks in this book where there's not a lot of information about them on the internet. 
Um, a lot of their stories um, have always been told um, in from person to person, more of in an oral tradition way. Um, and many stories are in archives that are quite old and uh, may not be easily accessible. But there's something about everyone in this book, and we hope that you dive in to learn about these great people who have meant so much to us and our center. Um, Ashley Corrin and I um, created a, a set of teaching posters. Um, these are available for free. Uh, these are really like hot off the presses. And so I'm gonna leave my um, email address in the chat if you would love to receive a set. There are sets of three. We have Naomi Osaka. Um, we also have um, Lydia Xe Brown, who is a disability justice advocate. Um, and going backwards here, Kathy Jetnell Kitchener, who is a Marshallese poet, a uh, climate change activist, uh, performance artist. Um, I know my little screen can't show all of the posters, but uh, in full, but inside we have pages for, we have biographical information. We also have um, the portrait analysis breakdown as well um, as uh, key terms and terminologies you can use in reference to these individuals. And then the, the bigger fold out is the poster itself uh, in great detail. So um, I will, um, my, my email address will be in the chat. Please send me a note if you would like to receive a set or more. We have a lot of copies. Happy to send them to you, uh, however many you'd like. Um, Ashley Korn and I said, get them while they're hot. It, this was a, a wonderful project to work on together that brings in elements of portrait analysis, but also brings in Asian American Pacific Islander histories, um, but also tips on how these individuals and their stories can be taught and talked about with students in creative ways. We also have um, activity suggestions in here as well. Um, so um, I hope that um, you will be interested in, in receiving a set. I would love to send you as many as you'd like. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, uh, Philip, I'm gonna hand it back over to you. Great, thank you so much, Andrea. Um, so this is the time where we invite um, any questions or comments you have. Um, and while those are coming in, so Andrea, you just walked us through a little bit of the collection. Is there anything else you would want to tell us about that? Or do you feel like you covered it? Wait, you're muted. Oh, sorry. I do want to address one question here for Jan. The elements of portrait analysis are also in the back of the, uh, they're in the poster. So one of the pages here, Sorry, I'm kind of backwards here. Um, you'll see analyzing the portrait. Um, the elements that we walk through are, are listed there. So the, uh, the portrait analysis is included in uh, the poster itself. Um, so uh, to go through some specific details in this Learning Lab collection, um, they all go through a general flow. So you'll see there's a getting started on, you know, uh, icons to look for and how to use the learning lab. I imagine uh, folks here are very familiar with it. Um, and all of these learning lab collections work in this flow of um, top down, left to right. Um, there is um, um, information about one's life. Here in this instance, we have career highlights. Um, and we have more information uh, and links out to this particular event of the U.S. Open um, and all the, the, the news coverage that uh, went into Naomi Osaka's masks. And um, I think there are also links about her soon after this speaking out about her mental health um, and her decision to uh, step out of some competition. Um, and what that meant for young people and athletes to speak up and say, I need to prioritize myself and my own health, so I'm, I'm stepping aside. Um, and then, as you can see, there's a thinking routine, a Project Zero thinking routine to help summarize what we're learning about her um, and some final re reflections on uh, how we're connecting this particular story of her and her life with greater Asian American um, histories. And, and actions that we might see in history textbooks. So um, there's a lot here. Um, and we have other athletes in the book. And so there are recommendations on how to connect Naomi Osaka's history and story in this book to um, other athletes. We have two surfers 
uh, who are in the book, who have led very different lives, um, who have similar stories of advocating for change and representation in the sport, but then also um, in speaking up for their own mental and physical health as well. So there's some nice, uh, there's a really nice overlap. Not, it's not so tied with one's industry and accomplishments. Um, we try and stay away from that um, uh, contribution model in talking about Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders and really try and get to the essence. Hopefully we've achieved that to some degree of who these individuals are and who they were um, and what was important to them beyond achievements and accomplishments. So, yeah. That's great. Thank you, Andrea. Um, well, would you mind adding my email address into the chat so I can? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to ask. So Tell me what it is. <laughs> yes, neighborsa at si.edu. Sorry, I'm just assuming. That you neighbors a. See if I got it. Oh, wait. Oh, God. I did it. I forgot the A. I did two ats. Hold on. Neighbors. We're so off. A. The is kind of like an A. Yeah. <laughs> I told Andrea, don't worry, it's very conversational. Okay, <laughs> so see if I got that address right. Yes. Okay. Please send me a note if you'd like a set. And uh, Gabrielle, yes, we, we can send them overseas. So please do, um, please send me an email with where I should send sets and how many sets you would like. Um, and I, I will get on that. Great. Um, I wanted to also show people, so I also put together a collection here and I'll put the link in the chat. So if you look in this collection, um, Tess and I are starting to put together learning lab collections to complement each of the cultivating learning sessions. Um, so what I have in this one is the portrait, which I took directly from the collection that Andrea just showed you. And then right here, the next tile is actually that full collection. Um, but the reason I did this separately is because you can also find content here. This next slide would take you right to the profile page of the Asian Pacific American Center. So there you can find all of their online content. And I'll open to that next, Andrea, in case you want to say anything. And then the last tile there is the web page of the APA Center. So, so that link is in the chat. And now I'll just open to the profile page in case you want to walk us through anything there. Um, yes, actually, I'll click through. Um, maybe we can look at uh, another athlete mm -hmm. just to kind of show where there are some similarities and, and differences. If you could click on uh, Eddie Aikau, um, second row with the light blue background. So Eddie Aikau is a um, very important story. Um, Eddie Akau is a young Native Hawaiian surfer. Um, in terms of surfing traditions in Hawaii, usually uh, Duke Kahanamoku is the one who gets a lot of attention, uh, a lot of coverage in sort of the history of surfing and surf competitions. Um, uh, but Eddie Akau is also as famous. Um, Eddie Akau was uh, not only a, a surfer, um, he was part of a a navigation team, um, you know, sailing and, and traveling across the Pacific, which is, you know, a, a, an ancient um, practice and way of, of, trans, of transportation. Sadly, he, um, he was missing out at sea and was never found. And so it's a very tragic story. Um, but if you go through this learning lab collection, um, he, Eddie Aikau's story is still one being warned um, you can see pictures of him and sort of his legacy um, and the importance of surfing, the importance of navigation. Um, there's information there about the Hokulea. Hokulea is a very important story to look into. Um, that still, there are navigation societies even today that are um, doing trips um, around the world and across the Pacific. Um, that's really important because you also learn that Eddie Aikau uh, for a while wasn't even represented in competitions. It was mostly um, uh, white Americans and non-Native Hawaiian folks who were um, being invited to compete and um, he wasn't. And so there's an interesting story there about uh, inclusion of belonging. And so it's a, it's a really incredible story. So I would recommend that. There is another surfer here I mentioned, uh, Carissa Moore, who was the first uh, gold medalist in the sport of surfing. 
Um, she uh, has a very different story um, in here, being a woman, but also talking about body image, um, physical health, um, and you know representation there, and sort of pressures of being a woman in the sport. And so um, there are some interesting um, parallels between all of the stories of our athletes, but also very different ones. Um, uh, Chris Moore has a great nonprofit called Moral Aloha um, that I would look into if you're interested in learning more about what she does. And there are links to it here as well. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, and then here is the homepage for the APA Center. So here you can see some of our, and I hope you visit our website. Uh, this is our, our, our center's latest project. It's called Brave Space. It's an album. You can download it on Apple Music if you have a subscription. I believe it's also on Spotify. You can listen to it on the website and learn more about the musicians and performers here. It's a really beautiful album. Um, it is, uh, it's worth kind of sitting in a quiet space and listening to. Um, I feel as if the launch of this that came out just about a week ago, uh, it's so needed at this time of um, what seems like continual collective healing for our communities and so many communities around the world. Um, so I, I highly recommend checking that out. And if you'd like to learn more about the book, um, if you scroll down a little bit, you can see uh, more information about where you can find a copy um, and where we have those 30 Learning Lab collections. And then the Learning Together page has uh, more activities um, and online resources. This is really a page meant for educators, uh, tips and tools on learning about Asian American and Pacific Islander histories and considerations if you have AAPI students in your classroom, how they can be cared for, how the uh, stories of stereotypes and biases and joy and celebration can all be in consideration in terms of how we uh, connect and, and learn more about each other. Beautiful. Thank you, Andrea. So I think that that is all we have planned for today. Um, do, so I'm just looking in the chat. If you have any other questions or thoughts, please do share them. Um, and in the meantime, I'll just tell you that our next session is at the end of February. Um, again, about citizen science and data literacy. And um, we have information on the, the help page. And um, thank you, Ashley. Any, any other questions or comments? I um, thoroughly enjoyed this <laughs> being here with you today, Andrea. Thank you so much for your presentation. There's so much amazing content to dive into with all of the collections for the book. So um, we look forward to hearing okay. from you online or any any of you out there, please do do write to us. Um, yes. Please be in touch, Philippa, thank you. Ashley Corin, thank you for being a great partner and putting these posters together. Um, I see some emails have come in requesting sets. I'm excited to share them. So thank you all so much. Thank you, everyone. Take care.